Yo, what's up, Serpa Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another Paladarian build. And this one will set up the new enclosure for Samson, my African bullfrog. If you recall, we made his first setup just over a year ago. That one was pretty cool, but I always knew I wanted to do it again in a larger tank. Let's transform a standard 75 gallon aquarium into Samson's forever home. The first thing I want to do is drill the tank for filtration. Prior to drilling, it's good to make sure the glass isn't tempered. For that, I'll use a pair of polarized sunglasses and a computer screen. I put a laptop in the tank and turn the sunglasses. You'll notice that the picture on the screen blacks out, which indicates that it's not tempered glass. If this doesn't occur, then the glass is tempered and can't be drilled. After that, I mark the glass for where I want to drill the holes using a diamond tipped hole saw as a guide. After that, I built up a ring of duct seal putty around the guide. I also put tape on the inside of the tank to keep the cut glass from potentially falling and breaking the other pieces. Once all of that was in place, I filled the putty reservoir with water and drilled with a diamond tip tool saw from earlier. In doing so, I'm not applying any pressure, I'm simply allowing the weight of the drill to do the work for me. Once the holes were made, I wet down some 150 grit sandpaper and buffed the edges of the glass. I wiped everything off with a microfiber cloth. These holes were made to accommodate two 3 quarter inch threaded bulkheads. Now on to the background. For this one I'll use a crevice background and faux rocks from Universal Rocks. Full disclosure, I got these for free, but I don't receive any compensation for talking about them. Anyway, before use, I sprayed them down to remove any debris from the manufacturing process. This wasn't necessary, but I figured it would make for less cleanup later on once the tank is set up. I went with this because the background is really thin and will allow me to maximize the footprint of the setup. The overall look also resembles something like what you would see in Samson's natural habitat. First I put the background portion in the tank to get a feel for how it will look. It looks good, but we need to drill through it to accommodate for one of the bulkheads. For that I drilled through the back of the bulkhead with a small bit to align the hole. Then I went back with the diamond tip tool saw and made an appropriately sized hole. With the hole drilled, I attached a low profile strainer. Now we can attach the background to the tank. For that I'm using GE Silicone 1. I started by applying silicone to the left side of the background only. From there I put a board and several PVC pipes up against the background. These held everything in place while the silicone cured. It may seem a bit excessive, but this will help keep the background as close to the glass as possible and thus maximizing the footprint of the tank. After allowing it to sit for 24 hours, I removed all of the pipes. As I said earlier, this build will include these faux stones. They're completely hollow which means they can easily be modified to create a land area like the previous paludarium. Before doing that, I placed the stones to get a sense of the scape. Here's what I ended up with. It's pretty simple but should function well. What I did next was draw a line on the stone. I cut along this line with a drywall saw. Now the stone can fit flush with the back of the tank. After that I marked the top of the stone. I cut along this line to create the barrier for the land area. This will work perfectly because the stone is waterproof already. I'll just have to affix it to the tank. I pressed the rock up against the background and marked a few areas that need cut. I removed these sections so the rock barrier can be attached directly to the glass. Otherwise it would have been much harder to seal. Before doing that, I marked the back of the tank so I know where to attach the rock. From there I applied silicone to the bottom of the rock and the back of the tank. It was pressed in place. An additional bead of silicone was applied along all of the edges on the outside and inside of the structure. I smoothed them out with my finger. Like usual it was left to cure for 24 hours so it was secure for the next steps. 
After that I rolled the background back into place. The other stones were put in place as well. It looks really sharp, but I need to make sure the land area is waterproof. I filled it up and it worked perfectly. During this step of the build, I realized I should have included more bulkheads to the back of the tank to make maintenance easier. One for draining the water feature and one for draining the land area. For that I'm using two half inch threaded bulkheads. I repeated the process from earlier to drill through the back of the tank. I put one near the filter's output and one in the land area. Once they were attached, I put the background in place once more. Now I'll hook up the hardware for the filter's return. For that I have a 45 degree barbed hose connector, a filter hose, hose clamps, and the return piece for the filter. To start I screwed in the hose connector. I attached a hose and secured it with a hose clamp. After that I measured the height of the intake strainer to determine where the return should go. I wanted a few inches higher than the strainer. I marked for this on the right side of the background and drilled a hole. Then I put the filter's return on the other end of the hose and secured it with a hose clamp. It was inserted through the hole in the background. I cut the hose a little shorter for better flow. The remainder of the background was silicone to the sides of the tank like before and let to sit overnight to cure. Now I used scrap segments of the background, silicone, and pigments from Universal Rocks to blend all of the pieces together. I siliconed a few pieces over the cracks and filled in the excess with silicone. I went back with a brush and applied pigments until I got a look that matches the rest of the background. At first the colors don't look totally the same, but they blend better once the silicone cures. I did this process on both sides of the land area. After that I siliconed the accent stones to the bottom of the tank. Once everything cured overnight, I ended up with a really cohesive look. With all of that taken care of, it's time to address the plumbing and filtration aspects of the build. I went with a Whale 500 canister filter that I got from my friends at Ciche. I also received this for free, but just like the background, I don't receive compensation for talking about it. This filter is probably a little oversized for 30 gallons of water. However, I went with something stronger because the tank is 4 feet off the ground and I need to account for the loss in pressure. I'll also be using two threaded 45 degree barbed hose connectors, two slip 45 degree barbed hose connectors, hose clamps, various filter hoses, barbed inline switch valves, OD fusion cement, and seal tape. I started by cementing two slip connectors to the drain bulkheads. Then I wrapped the threaded hose connectors with seal tape. These were screwed into the other bulkheads. A short length of filter hose was attached to each of the drain connectors. A switch valve was added to each hose and secured with clamps. I also decided to connect the two together with a barbed T insert so there's technically only one drain tube. Hoses were attached to the appropriate connectors and secured with clamps. Lastly these were connected to the canister filter. With all of the hardware in place, I can finally do a water test. I know the tank will hold water, but I want to ensure all of the plumbing pieces will as well. Sometimes they're not tight enough and will leak. Luckily everything was in order and it held water perfectly. Now we can finish off the land area. I'll treat this just like I did the previous paludarium. I'm going to use a piece of metallomat as the false bottom and a sheet of geotextile fabric as the barrier. I wrapped the metal mat with the fabric and pressed it down into the land area. I'll also be using the same substrate mix as before which consists of cocoa fiber, sphagnum moss, and orchid bark. I filled in the land area with this mixture. Let's move on to the hardscape. To maximize the space for Samson, I'm keeping it simple with a few small pieces of Malaysian driftwood and a single large piece that's covered in java moss. I started by placing the moss covered piece. I like how it looked but I knew it would fit better if I split it into multiple pieces. After being split in two, it fit into the scape much better than before. 
Then I added the smaller pieces. Now let's bring the scape to life with the plants. I'm using most of the same plants as before including curly ficus pumula, bird's nest fern, golden pothos, and syngonium podophyllum. For the planting substrate I mixed up some sea chem fluorite and fluval stratum with the fluorite as the primary substrate. I'll also use geotextile fabric and zip ties for this portion of the build. I cut out squares of fabric and filled them with a small amount of substrate. Then I wrapped the roots of the plants in the fabric and lightly zip tied it shut. The excess fabric was snipped off. What I've created is a nice starter pot for the plant. I did this for most of the plants and placed them throughout the setup. I utilized crevices to keep them situated. Over time the roots will grow through the fabric and anchor onto other surfaces. The only plant I didn't do this for was the pothos. It was planted along the edges of the land area. That seemed to work out perfectly in the previous setup. I also tried to plant everything in areas where Samson likely won't ruin them. It may seem a little sparse, but they'll grow in over time. Now then, let's add substrate to cover the bottom of the tank. For that I'm using brown sand. This should match well with the background and create a cohesive aesthetic. I used a hose to more evenly distribute it throughout the setup. Once it was evened out, I filled up the rest of the tank. There are just a few more details to add including leaf litter and springtails. I sprinkled leaves on the land area and throughout the water feature. They'll tie everything together, make for a more natural looking setup, and help jumpstart the springtail colony. They were added next, and as you probably know, they'll help clean up after Samson. The last thing I need to address in this video are the lids. For that I'll make screens using the method I've shown previously. It consists of screen frames, screen corners, spline, and fiberglass screen. To construct this you simply cut out the frames and attach them together with the corners. Then you use a spline roller to attach the screen to the frame with the spline. The excess can be removed and it should fit right into the aquarium's frame if you measured correctly. And there you have it, the new and improved African Bullfrog Paludarium. I think it's an improvement from the previous setup and will function better for Samson, especially since it's twice his size. We're not going to add him in this video though. I want to let the plants root in and become established for a few weeks prior. Don't worry, I'll show that in a future video. In the meantime, I'll let it do its thing. I'll likely tweak things a little bit and I also need to add a cleanup crew in the water feature. I'll talk about that next time though. I've been working on this for a few weeks now and I really like how it turned out. I'm curious to know what you think though. Let me know down in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this one. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.